In this video, I'm going to replace a bearing from the pivot of a Technics 1210 turntable. But first, a quick message from the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. If it's your first time placing an order, you'll get a $5 discount. Most small boards cost around $5, so you'll get it for free. If you use the link in the description, they know that I've sent you and that helps the channel out. Now let's get back to the video. Here we have an example and the top looks good. But if we look on the bottom, we can see that there are some damage to the bearing. Now I've been doing this for a little while and it doesn't always work. But I'm going to show you how I do it and then we'll do some testing afterwards. Now the first thing that we need to do is get this old bearing out. I don't want to put it in a vise or squash it in any way. And we don't want to mark or scratch the paint. So I made a 3D printed clamp for it so that I can hold it in place. And then we can secure it in this vise. So I tried a few things and I brought a set of picks and as you can see they're not very good and it would just bend when I applied any pressure. So I had a look through my tools and I found this metal pick that was just part of a cheap blade kit. So we push this into the middle of the bearing and we just keep wiggling around and deform the rim of the bearing and push down, bend it, move it around and then eventually it will pop out of the old bearing holder. And there we go, we managed to pop the old bearing out without doing any damage to the pivot. And here we can see the old ball bearings. And then we have removed the bearing from the pivot. And this is what I'm going to replace it with. It's a generic radio controlled car bearing. The part we're going to use is an MR52ZZ. That is five millimeter outside diameter, two millimeter inside and 2.5 millimeter deep. And ZZ means that it's a sealed bearing and you don't actually see the ball bearings inside. And now we need to get this bearing into the old pivot. And as you can see, it's just too big. So the best option is to drill out the base of the pivot with a five millimeter drill. We need a really good quality drill bit and that it's really sharp. If it's not sharp, it won't cut clean. I found if we try to use a smaller drill for a pressure fit, it would mean that we have to push on the bearing and I don't want to damage the pivot or deform it. So we have to use five millimeter and a little bit of glue to hold it in place. And we have to be very careful with the glue on the bearing. We don't want to glue the bearing so that it doesn't move freely. We really don't want to be using a hand drill for this. We want to use a pillar drill so that we can drill straight so that the bearing is straight. And that was another reason why I made the bracket so that we can keep everything straight and true. So here's the pillar drill. I have a five millimeter drill bit in there, which I marked with some tape so that I can always put it back in the right place. It's very important that we don't drill too far into the bottom of the pivot. If we go too far, it means that the pivot will not move freely because it will be resting on the L-shaped bracket that it rotates on. Here we can see one of my previous attempts where I'd actually drilled too far and the bearing is recessed too far down. And here you can see when I put the bearing into the L-shaped bracket, there is no gap around the base. So when it moves, it's going to rub against it and we don't want that, it will cause friction. Now, if we don't go deep enough, then the bearing will be offset towards the top and the top will actually catch rather than the bottom. So we need to get this depth just right. From experience, I found that it's best not to clamp the vise down in any way. So we want to line it up as close as possible by eye. And then when we start to drill, we go in a very small amount and the piece will align itself as you'll see in a second.
and then just keep checking. So we're not quite there yet. And what we're looking for is for the bearing to be flush with the top of that inner part of the pivot. So we just need to go a little bit further, we still have a little bit of a lip. Okay, I think that is about perfect. Yep, it feels just about flush with the rest of the metal work. So the next step is to glue the bearing into the pivot. We want to clear out all of the filings and all of the oil and clean it off with some IPA. Otherwise the grease will stop the super glue from working. Next we need to get a small amount of glue onto the side of the bearing and we want to be very careful that we don't get any glue on the inside of the bearing. So I'm just going to put a small amount on the end of this Q-tip with the end cut off. And there we go. And um, we also just want to make sure that we still have free movement on the inside of the bearing. And then we just give that a bit of time to dry. Once that's dried, just give it another few turns, make sure that it still moves freely. That feels good. So let's put that into an L-shaped bracket. That looks good, it looks like it's flush and straight. We have a good equal amount of space around the top and the bottom. So let's put the bearing lock back in the top. Now we need to tweak this, but we want to get it so that it spins freely, but we don't have any play to the like to the sides when you when you move it okay so there's no left or right movement but it's not spinning quite as freely as I would like so I'm just going to loosen it off a little bit So just looking at the top, you can see that there is the outer section, which is the lock, and the inner part that we adjust. Well, that's looking really good. There's still no play at all, so I'm just going to loosen it off a tiny bit more, because when we do it, turn the locking knot, it removes it anyway. And that feels really good. There's still no movement and as you can see, it's spinning really, really freely now. So now that everything is feeling good, I'm just going to lock that top part down. So let's give it a spin and as you can see, it's spinning really, really freely now, which is excellent. That's what we want.
and I can't feel any play or movement in the bearing while it's spinning so I think this one should be good and let's put this back into a tonal. Right, so this is a tone I'm using the bearing that we just replaced in the pivot. I've put it all back together and what we're looking for now is to quickly balance up this tone arm so that we have the correct amount of force pressing down. What we want to do is get the tone arm so that it's floating without any pressure up or down. And we do this by adjusting the counterweight at the back until the, the arm just literally floats. We turn the dial on the counterweight to zero and then that means we can move the counterweight forward to get the desired weight that we want. So now that that's at zero, I'm going to move it forward so that there is two grams of weight, which isn't the full amount, but I always do this when I'm testing on a single-sided record. So here is my single-sided test record and we're just going to place the stylus on and what we're looking for is a nice slow gradual movement going towards the center of the record. If we've done our job correctly, it should move freely without stopping, speeding up, slowing down or doing anything particularly strange. So that looks really good. It moved nice and slowly across, didn't deviate in any way. Uh, so this time I think I actually did a good job and this replacement bearing is working as I would like it to work. It doesn't always work it like this. Sometimes it doesn't move freely enough and it's just one of those things. But I can pretty much do it, I'd say four out of five times now. I hope that you found this information useful. It's not an easy thing to do, but I've given you all of the information that you would need to actually do it yourself. The only thing you don't have is that 3D printed part. Now I need to find the model so that I can give it to you and uh, hopefully I will have found that by the time the video is uploaded and then you can print it out try it for yourself. Thank you for watching my videos and I'll see you on the next one.